everybody. Now uh, you should really be sharpening your skills and getting really good. And this next uh, method is my favorite method. Uh, I don't know how it compares from an efficiency standpoint to the other methods, but I really don't care because again, SQL for data science and business intelligence, a lot of the time, you're not worried about how long the query takes to run. You're worried about how easy it is to understand, share, and just get it to work properly. So we're gonna use row number. Um, let's just start hacking on it. We're gonna get the um, uh, p.payment ID, p.customer ID, p.payment date from payment p, and let's just look at that real quick. Okay, let's order by, um, order by one. Okay, good. So now we have a, a row for every payment, customer, and date. Uh, we can see here that uh, this customer has multiple orders. We just want to figure out how to assign a ranking column uh, for each customer. So let me order by two, actually. Great. Um, order by two, and I'll order by three. All right, so here we have customer one and their orders are going up over time. Uh, now we want to assign a column that ranks the order of one being the earliest for the customer. So let's do that here. It's really easy. We're just going to drop down, add a new column, row number over partition by P. We want it to restart every customer. That's why the partition is on the customer. And we're going to order by um, P dot payment ID, which should be the same exact result as P dot payment date. Um, and we're going to order it default as ascending. I'll just put it in there to be explicit. If you don't have that, it will still be ascending. And let's see what happens. Great. So. I'm going to call this as a uh, cust order rank. And there you go. You'll see that as the customer's orders increase over time, this is their first order, their second order, their third order. And finally, the latest order they place, their 30th order is on the latest date. Um, and the ranking row numbering restarts for the second customer. Um, let's just uh, do a quick experiment. And let me highlight what I was saying about the payment ID. Recall that the payment ID goes up over time too. It's the primary key of the table, payment. And we can, you know, originally we sorted by the ID, but the payment date should also do the trick. We'll call that customer order rank based on payment. We'll call that one customer order rank based on date. <clears throat> and they should yield identical results. They do because this key is going up over time. So you can see here, now we have the basis set to say, okay, I, I just want everything from this table where, you know, we'll just choose uh, this is equal to one. So again, we just use our handy outer select strategy. We'll alias it as T and we'll say where T dot equals one. And lo and behold, you will have, should have 599 rows, here they are, and we accomplished uh, the same thing as we did with the correlated subquery, with the common table expression above, and uh, you know, maybe this is more understandable for you, I don't know. I happen to like row number because the more you use it, the better you get at it, and the better you get at detecting opportunities to find rankings within the, uh, within the partition. So hopefully by now you're getting the hang of row number, you're seeing the value, and um, you, you know you're really starting to understand um, how it can be useful. So okay, thank you.